Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Steve Malsberg Show. You know by the music uh, that uh, probably we're going to have something to do with a uh, Miss America segment. Uh, it's not the current Miss America. It's uh, Miss America 2003, former Miss America, who has uh, jumped into a congressional race in the uh, great state of Illinois. And um, it is the 13th congressional district, a seat held by a, a Republican at this point, uh, Rodney Davis. And we welcome in... Erica Harold, who is running for that seat. Hello, Erica. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me on. How are you? Good, good. It's my pleasure. And uh, just, you know, any, anytime someone with your notoriety uh, gets involved in politics, certainly it's, uh, it's a big deal and people are going to want to talk to you. So thanks for coming on. I, I want to point out to, to the, uh, the audience, uh, you know, from what I could tell looking at your picture, you're African-American, correct? I am. Okay, I just want, and I think I think that does lend something to it because uh, you know you would become if you if you won um, the first Republican African American uh, um, uh, Congresswoman, correct? I, I believe that's true. I know that Mia Love in the state of Utah is also she's running, running but and she and she ran and she did not succeed the last time, but she is running this time. Yes. That's right. So there are maybe maybe there will be two shots at it this time. Yeah. All right. So what what has motivated you to run? I mean, you're you're obviously uh, uh, not only beautiful but uh, brilliant by your resume, Harvard, the whole thing. Uh, you're 33. That's very kind of you. No. Well, I mean, you know, anybody who goes to Harvard, although you know, Phi Beta Kappa. I know our president didn't graduate Phi Beta Kappa. At least I don't think he did. Uh, so anyway, uh, you 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 have that going for you. You have everything. You could probably do most anything you wanted to do. So why why get into politics and why? Um, challenge an incumbent Republican if, as a Republican? Well, I've always had a strong interest in politics and public service, and I've always been looking for an opportunity where I thought I could serve a district really well and also help expand the party. And I feel that the 13th district is a district where I could be a great representative because it's a swing district. So not only does a Republican have to be somebody who can espouse strong conservative principles, but they have to also be able to reach out to voters who may not traditionally vote for Republican candidates. There are a lot of college campuses in campuses in the district. And so I think that with my background and my track record of reaching out to groups who may not be traditional conservative voters, I think I have an opportunity of competing for those votes. All right. Now, uh, how do you differ from uh, Congressman Davis? What is it? I mean, he just, uh, you know, he, he's uh, just started. Um, what is it that makes you different? What is it that makes you say he shouldn't continue? Uh, what is it that, that, that you're going to offer to voters that you feel he hasn't or won't uh, offer to voters between now and uh, 2014? Well, I definitely want to emphasize the fact that I think he's a good person. And we didn't have a primary process for this seat last time. Um, he was selected by the county chairman in the area because of the resignation of the Republican who was holding the seat at the time. So this will be the first time that we have the opportunity to have that primary process. And I think during the course of that process, we'll find out what some of our policy differences are. But in terms of how we differ at this point in time, I think outreach is one of the ways in which we really differ. And the Republican Party put out their growth and opportunity report where they talked about the importance of expanding the party, not just being able to emphasize the values that appeal to the base, but being able to translate those to other voters. And so I think at this point in time, that's probably where we where we most strongly differ. All right, let's talk about some, some of the issues. Um, I know you have problems with Obamacare. Would you be willing to vote to repeal it? I'd be willing to vote to address whatever is in place by the time I get to Congress, if, that's, if, if it still is in place, because part of my legal practice involves health care. And so I represent employers and health care physicians who are trying to figure out administratively and on a practical, practical level, how can they actually implement this? How are they subject to penalties? And so this is something that I've been looking at a pretty granular level. And I think that if it's not addressed pretty quickly, it's going to have a lot of unforeseen, unfortunate consequences pretty far into the future. So, so if it's in, if it, you know, it's due to kick in in 2014, uh, I don't see how it uh, would not kick in unless uh, something unforeseen happens. Uh, so, again, would you be willing to vote to repeal it? I likely would be willing to vote to repeal it, but I also want to see what the final IRS regulations are, are in place as well, because I know we've seen right now that the IRS is going to have a great, a great deal of influence over the way in which it is implemented, and I think probably 
lot of Americans are concerned about that, given the fact that there's been some overreaching with the IRS, and I think that's not where we would want that discretion to be executed. Yeah, well, there's a, you know, overreaching as putting it mildly. What do you think? <laughs> what's your take on the? I, I like I like to do understatement uh, when possible. Okay, I think okay. That, well, what's your, what's your take on the the IRS scandal? What's your take on the most recent revelations of the the um, phone records of uh, just about every American uh, being tracked, as well as uh, uh, computer, uh, you know, uh, uh, the searches and, and uh, emails in some cases. The president addressed it today, said it's necessary for national security. It's something that we need. Um, are, are you okay with all of that? Uh, certainly not. I can't imagine there's anybody who is okay with that because being able to protect privacy and being able to communicate freely without being monitored by the government is something that I think a right that we just take for granted. But I think on a broader perspective, the fact that we have all these congressional hearings and people are coming up and taking the fifth or saying they don't know what's going on in their agency, I think it shows one of the dangers of having an ever-expanding government. And that's why having a limited government that ju does just those essential functions is so important. What, what do you, and we're talking to Erica Harold, she's a former Miss America, and running for Congress uh, uh, in the primary against uh, incumbent Republican Rodney Davis uh, in Illinois. Um, what's the disconnect between the Republican Party and the African American community? Do you believe? Because I, again, um, I don't, I, but I don't believe for a second the the the, uh, the uh, black community is monolithic at all. But in general, African Americans care about you know m much of the same things that uh, that Republicans and conservatives do: traditional marriage, family values, education, jobs, economic growth. So where's the disconnect? I think that part of the biggest disconnect, and there's not just one one aspect, but part of it is the party has to be willing to at least show up and compete for the vote. I think oftentimes we're too quick to write off different groups if we think we can't win their vote easily. But especially when there are groups that that share similar values, we have to be willing to go there and compete. And in 2004, I was part of an outreach effort with the RNC where we did just that. We convened groups of African-American business leaders throughout the country and talked about how some of the conservative economic principles could empower African-American businesses. And I think it's, it's having the respect to go to each group and say, there have been some issues in the past, but let's have a clean slate, and we at least want to ask for the right to compete for your vote. Do you know that if you get the nomination, um, depending on how much notice, uh, and they will take notice, the media, I mean, oh, let me let me put it this way. You've seen what the media has done to Sarah Palin, but she's not African American, but you've seen what they've done to Condoleezza Rice, you've seen what they've done to Michael Steele, I, Clarence Thomas. I mean, I, I could go down the list. Um, uh, every time there's a, a, a black woman uh, uh, who's a Republican or a conservative male or a, a conservative Hispanic, Marco Rubio, we took a drink of water, oh my God. Are you prepared for the media onslaught if it, if it comes? Well, I think if you're a former Miss America and you run for anything, you're prepared for media onslaught. But I found, at least with the African-American voters in my district, they've been really receptive to the idea that I'm running as a Republican. So thus far, I haven't faced any of that animosity or any of the tension that some others have faced. And so I think I'm just going to stay focused on promoting the po a positive agenda and cross any bridges of negativity if they come. Uh, I'm sorry. What do you think of of that uh, that negativity that's been aimed at other blacks in the past for being conservative? I think that overall, anytime people are attacked just for their belief system, it obviously is an, is an unfortunate consequence, and I think it makes people less willing to stand up for their values, especially if they are outside of the mainstream. But I think in my case, I, just, I have not experienced that yet. I've had an overwhelmingly positive response from African American voters within the district, and I think that there are great inroads that can be met in terms of taking conservative Republican principles and reaching out to African American voters. One more. What do you, what do you think of Barack Obama? I don't agree with much of what he's done in office. I, I, I think Obamacare probably has been, again, I'll use an understatement, it's not been a positive development in terms of our, our policy making. Um, but I do have respect for anyone who holds the office of sitting president, and I think that one of the things that should happen in our politics is a level of respect and deference for the individual. But from a policy perspective, I certainly don't agree with much of what he's done. All right. Listen, uh, Erica, I hope you'll come back uh, between now and then as we move.